Hello, my name is Joshua, and today I'm going to walk through how to use state space methods with MATLAB and Simulink to model, analyze, and develop controls for an induction motor. A quick overview is as follows. First, I will briefly cover some basic fundamentals on the operation of an induction motor. Then, I will discuss how to develop a state space model of the motor and to analyze it for certain desirable characteristics. I will then go through developing a controller and evaluating its response to a specified input. Finally, I will discuss how to design an observer-based controller operating under the assumption that the system states are unknown. This is a basic diagram of an induction motor. It consists of two major parts, the stator, which is stationary, and the rotor, which rotates. An alternating current producing the stator coils creates a rotating magnetic field. That magnetic field interacts with another field created by a current through the rotor coils, causing it to rotate as well. This is the circuit representation of the induction motor. Note that the voltage input voltage, and by extension the induced currents, is a time varying sinusoid that operates at a specific magnitude, frequency, and phase. Speed control of the rotor is typically accomplished by manipulating either the magnitude, or more commonly, the frequency of the input. All of the values seen here, such as the resistance, inductance, and slip, indicated by the lowercase s, are fixed values inherent to each machine. To begin creating a state space model, we must first derive the mathematical equations that describe this circuit. We first apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to the mesh on the left side, resulting in this equation. We then do the same to the other mesh. And though these two equations are sufficient in describing the circuit characteristics, we can also use Kirchhoff's current law to derive another equation that relates to three currents. This will be used to demonstrate the idea of minimal realization. More on that later. The next step is to define our states, our input, and our output. As shown here, the currents in the circuit were defined as the states of the system. That is because they are the quantities that must be derived with respect to time. When we substitute the state space definitions into the circuit equations, it becomes a little more apparent why we define them that way. Our goal here is to take these equations and place them into the general form for a state space model. This is the MATLAB script that was used to accomplish that goal. First, I define the symbolic variables used in the equations. Then I enter the KBL and KCL equations. Those equations were then grouped together and the solve function was used to solve for each of the three time varying quantities. The results of the solve function was three equations that are shown here in matrix form. Note how the columns associated with the X3 state are both zero. This corresponds to the unnecessary KCL equation from earlier. Now that we've created the general form of the state space model, we can assign some realistic numbers to the values that are inherent to the machine. The result updates the matrices to these values, and we get a complete state space model. Now, before we can begin to design a controller, we must first analyze the model for stability, observability, and controllability. At MATLAB, we first use the state space function, seen here as SS, to create the state space system. Then we can use the EIG or EIG function to calculate the eigenvalues of the system. If those values are all negative, then the system is stable. If one or more of the values are equal to zero, then the system is marginally stable. But if any of the eigenvalues are positive, then the system is considered unstable. This particular system returned two negative values and one zero, making it marginally stable. Next, because the process is so similar, the observability and controllability were determined at the same time. The LBSV and CTRB functions were used to determine the observability and controllability matrices as defined here on the left. Then the rank of each was subtracted from the length of the A matrix. If the result is zero, then the matrix is full rank. In this case, the observability matrix was not full rank, therefore the system contains at least one state that is unobservable. In the next two steps, we first convert the system to diagonal canonical form or modal form and evaluate the system's modes for detectability by multiplying the modal C matrix by the transformation matrix. The result indicates that two of the modes are not observable, therefore the system is not detectable. This brings us back to the idea of minimal realization. A system is said to be minimally realized if it's both observable and controllable. 
MATLAB has a function specifically for addressing this. The min real function accepts a system as an input and returns a min realized system. Note the new system is the same as the old one, except the columns associated with the state variable x3 have both been removed here and here. Now that we have a new minimally realized system, we can confirm that it has the desired characteristics. We determine the new eigenvalues, which both of which are negative. Then we recalculate the observability and controllability matrices and evaluate their rank. Both are indeed full rank, indicating that we now have a state space model that is both observable and controllable. Here we have the Simulink model of the open loop system and its response to a step input. This line represents the input to the system, and this one the output. As you can see, the system's response slowly makes its way to an asymptote that falls well short of the input signal. To adjust the response of the system, we design a controller. Shown here are the dynamics for a state space system with both feedback and reference tracking. The significance of each will become a little more apparent in a moment when we review the system response. First, we use MATLAB to calculate the feedback's gain matrix using an approach that employs a linear quadratic regulator. It should be noted that Ackerman's formula could be used, could also be used, but the adjustment of the system's poles to optimize the system is more straightforward using LQR. Ackerman's is best used when you already know exactly where the pole should be. Either way, the system structure is identical. To begin, new minimally realized matrices are defined and the system is entered into MATLAB. Then the Q and R matrices associated with the LQR are defined. These values can be somewhat arbitrary and where you begin can be based on experience. As it's noted, I found it's use it was useful to begin with the identity matrix and modify it as needed. The matrices play a role in the location of the closed loop system poles. The reason it is easier to the reason it's easier to adjust than Ackermann's is because the diagonal values of the Q matrix correspond directly to applying weights to the states of the system, and the R corresponds to the control effort. Overall, it's just a more intuitive way of adjusting the feedback to obtain the desired response. Finally, the gain matrix K is calculated using MATLAB's LQR function. The function also returns the solution to the algebraic Riccati equation and the new poles of the closed loop system. Next, we need to calculate the reference gain. This can be accomplished a couple of ways. The first is by direct computation. The second is by first defining the closed loop A matrix and converting the state space system into a transfer function. Then the gain is calculated by evaluating the inverse of the transfer function as S goes to zero. This line of code simply divides the last term in the denominator by the last term in the numerator to accomplish that. Result is a state space system with a controller and reference tracking. Here we have the Simulink state space model with feedback and reference gain. Evaluating the response, first we have the input step function. Then we revisit the open loops for response. This is the response with only the feedback gain included in the system. Notice how it reaches its asymptote much quicker than the open loop response. It obviously, though, does not reach the appropriate magnitude. Next, we have the response of the completed closed loop system. This is the response of the system with the initial Q equal to the identity matrix. This is the completely optimized response. It tracks the input value at the greatest possible speed without any overshoot. Now, to make this evaluation more applicable to a motor, we can compare the step response to that of the response to a 60 hertz sinusoidal input. Remember that the identity matrix did not did reach the magnitude of the input, but it was slower than that of the optimized matrix. When comparing the sinusoidal responses, the optimized response is closer in magnitude and in phase to the input. Now that we have an optimized controller, let's make the assumption that the states of the system cannot be directly observed. What we can do is to create an observer or estimator to estimate the states so that we can implement our feedback gain. The dynamics of this new structure are displayed at the top of the screen. The, on the only new matrix that is needed is the estimator gain L matrix. 
The concept of superposition allows us to design the location of the poles for the controller and the estimator separately, and then combine them into the same system. We have our controller, so all that is needed is to determine where to put the poles of the estimator. Ideally, we'd like the observer to operate faster than the actual system, so a good place to start is to place the poles two to five times more negative than the controllers. Realistically, the poles could be more or less negative than the five times chosen here. The problem with faster responses is that can be, they can be more susceptible to noise. Once the location of the poles is determined, the place function is used to calculate the estimator gain. The final computation here is not essential to this. It simply uses the new system dynamics to calculate the reference tracking gain to see that it hasn't changed from earlier. It's just included here as sort of a double check on work that's been completed. Plotted here is the optimized system step response to both the observer-based controller and the directly controlled system. Note that the response is identical. If we evaluated the estimated states of the observer with the actual states, we see that the estimations are also identical to the actual states. This means that our observer is working perfectly. To summarize, we began with an induction motor we evaluated its electrical characteristics to create a state space model. We then analyzed the characteristics of that model to obtain a stable, minimally realized system. The open loop response, system response to a step input was observed and a controller was designed to obtain the desired response. Then we explored the possibility that the states could not be observed and we designed an observer to estimate the states so that we can implement our controller and obtain an equivalent response. Thank you for joining me as we walk through the state space modeling analysis controller and observer design of an induction motor. Please note that the block diagram for the observer based controller was extracted from feedback systems and introduction for scientists and engineers. This video was produced as part of requirements for ECE 5115 control lab two at the University of Houston, Houston, Texas. Thank you.